I just went to the web and I just typed in iPhone and I uh, went to images and just uh, I've just picked out an iPhone image that I thought looked pretty crisp and clear and uh, what I thought had a pretty good gradient and I came up with this we're gonna use this to make a vector image out of when I'm when I'm working here in Illustrator I'm using command plus to zoom in and command minus to zoom out and I'm also holding down spacebar to get this little hand where I can grab the screen and move it around so let me zoom in and show you the difference between a vector graphic and a raster graphic a raster graphic is going to have little boxes of color those are called pixels and it can be edited in a raster graphic photo editing software like Photoshop right so in Illustrator I can't I can't edit anything about this raster graphic I can only use it as a reference image but mainly when you're in here in Illustrator you're going to be using something called points and paths so if I hit P for pen and I click 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 and then close this path you can see I have segments with points in between those segments so that is something that I can then use my selection tool and I can click and drag this and scale this and if I have color in there it will never ever pixelate so that's why people use this for logo design they want something that's gonna be crisp and clear with clean edges and never pixelate never lose image quality based on the size that you make it so let's go ahead and recreate this little phone right here and I'm gonna start off by hitting M on my keyboard that's my rectangle tool and I want this rectangle to be approximately the size of the screen on the phone so I'm just gonna drag these handles here to make that rectangle I just clicked and, and dragged a box so I'm gonna drag these handles right here just to get real close into there and then you can see some little dots inside the corners here if you click and hold on one of those dots and just bring that down we should be able to conform it to the curvature of that screen. It looks like I need to go back up a little bit more. Once you have that, hit V on your keyboard. That's the selection tool. And then click and drag and hold shift while you're dragging to keep that locked in on the x-axis as you kind of move it across and then release everything and then click over here to deselect. So there's our screen. Another thing that I want to do before I get too far into this is I want to create some uh, I want to bring out some of the colors that you see in here. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and make a box and make another box and make another box. Those are all blue, so I need to hit I for eyedropper. And I want to select this pink color, get the selection tool, click that next box. And I want to make, uh, let's see, I want this kind of bluish color right here. And then I want to hit the selection tool and click this box. And this box is going to be, I want to pull out this black, kind of darker grayish color right here. Uh, maybe even more of kind of a gray color, not so much dark black. All right, selection tool, deselect. Now we have everything ready to go for the next steps. So we are going to make that gradient right there that you see there going from pink to blue in just a little bit. But first, I want to copy this and paste another exact duplicate of that up on top. Um, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. So now I have, whoops, I should have done paste in place. So command Z to undo that. Anytime you need to undo anything, just hit command Z. And of course, if you're working with a Windows computer, anything that I'm saying for the command key, it's going to be the control key. So just um, just know that if you're working on a different platform. So um, I've, already, I've already copied it, so now I need to paste in place. And so now I've got a duplicate right up on top of the other one. And what I want to do with that is uh, mess around with the, not the fill, but the stroke. So I'm going to swap this with this little arrow here. And it crossed out the fill. That's just like a, like a paint bucket fill of the shape. It crossed that out. And my stroke here is what I want to manipulate. So this is your stroke, like a border color around the shape. So I'm going to double click on that. And I want to get kind of that darker... Uh, almost a black color. Then I want to come up here to the top where it says stroke. By the way, you can change your fill and stroke here at the top. Um, but here I want to just bump this arrow up right here a couple times. Um, it looks like seven is going to be good for me. That's the stroke weight. And I'm going to leave it at that. So selection tool, deselect. Now I want to create this little notch that comes out of the phone. And I'm going to hit M for this one too and make a rectangle just about the width of that little notch right there and then I'm going to swap this hit A on my keyboard 
deselect, and then select this point here on this corner, hold shift, and select this point, and now I only have these two points. You can see those are blue, and these two points are white. The ones that are white are not selected. The ones that are blue are selected, and the ones that are selected, you can see that there's a little circle inside of those corners, not those corners, and that's what I want. So now I can click and drag, and it'll round off only these corners and not those... Uh, not the uh, the bottom ones or the top ones there. So hit V, deselect, and now I've got my little notch. And I can drag that over, drag, start dragging first, and then hold down shift, and then drag that straight over so that you know it's in the exact same spot as uh, the other one. You see how the stroke kind of comes on the inside and outside of that path? So what I think I need to do is make the stroke go only on the outside of that path. I want to go to Window, Appearance, and then on Appearance, we want to pull this over and click on the word stroke, click on that, and then we want to go to a line stroke to the outside, it's the third option there. And then maybe, possibly, our stroke is too thick now, let's see, we might have to reduce the thickness of our stroke, and that's right in here too. Actually it looks pretty good, the way it was. So just align that stroke to the outside, and now our notch looks like it's supposed to. Looking good so far. Now I want to kind of dive into the gradient. I kind of saved the gradient for this step because the gradient can be a little bit tricky if you've never used it before. And uh, in order to create the gradient, we need to pull out our swatches panel. And if you can't find the swatches panel, it's in Window, Swatches, right there. Anytime you have, see a panel on my screen that you can't find, then just go up here to Window, and you can find all your panels right in this area. So in our swatches, we want to create a swatch based on the colors that we pulled out from our image. So click on this first one, click on the fill. So this color, this fill, is what I want to make a new swatch of. Make sure that global is checked, click OK. Next one is the blue color, make a new swatch from that. Global's checked, click OK. Now, the global ones have a little white corner, a little tag on them. It lets me know that I can change that color later and it'll change it to every instance every time that I use that color anywhere on my artwork or on my artboard. So that's really really helpful um, in the future to be able to change that color and not have to worry about going to every single spot that I use that color and change it individually. It lets me change it all at one time. So I'm going to click on this shape and then I'm going to go over here to my swatches again and just click on a default gradient and here's my gradient panel. Again, window and then gradient if you can't find that. In here, I can double click on these, which are called little color stops. Double click on this one, and this time I want to use my swatches here, and then go to the blue color that's in the bottom left corner there. And it is a linear gradient going from just only left to right, and we'll fix that in just a little bit. This stop, double click on that, and then choose that pink color. Now, in the middle here, you can see that kind of blends and makes sort of a purplish color, and over here it looks more like a kind of a white gradient here. So it's really, it's a nice creamy gradient that just goes all the way across. So we want to try to capture that same look. So just click right below this gradient scale. Right below here you can change or you can put in more uh, color stops. If you want to delete them you just drag them down. Click and drag them down. So double click on this one and for this I just want to go to my color palette right here. I'm gonna click on this little white icon here and then just bump this there we go. That looks better. Alright, now let's change the angle of this gradient. Let's try 45. That's looking pretty good. If we want to adjust this even further, we go to the gradient tool here over in our toolbox, and it gives us this line that goes across here. And you can kind of hover over this end and rotate it if you want to. And that you also have these little stops here that you can slide around if you want to introduce more color that way or this way you can do that there too so that's looking pretty good I'm gonna go to the selection tool deselect there command minus to zoom out and that was really fast that was that was really quick to make our first little rendition of that that iPhone the next thing is to kind of create some of these elements in here which I can do probably pretty easily with just some circles let me start with this circle down here hit L on your keyboard and then hold down option and shift kinda of hover your mouse over the center of that circle hold down option and shift and then click and drag and try to get that exact shape of the circle there I'm going to drag this then hold shift as I drag 
and move it kind of where I think the center is here. We'll align everything in a minute. Swap that, double click on the stroke, and we want to get kind of a bluish color like this. Let's see if that worked. That's pretty good for right now. The stroke thickness needs to be a little bit thicker. Click on that stroke, and we want to increase the stroke weight just a little bit. Now keep in mind, if something doesn't have a fill and you're trying to move it, you have to click right on the path to move it. If I try to click inside of that circle, it, it, you, a lot of times it doesn't click the circle. So you got to make sure that you're clicking right on that path line in order to move it. All right, so let's use that same circle option, hold down option to where you get those two little arrows for the cursor. That'll allow you to duplicate something. So hold down option or alt on your keyboard click and drag and now I want to use this circle for I'm just going to recreate this number real fast so drag that corner while holding option and shift which gives you that perfect circle that will scale in from the middle let's do that again hold down option and shift drag the corner there we go hold only alt or option click and drag up so I'm holding alt to drag up and I'm holding shift at the same time to lock it into place let go of everything hold down option and shift and drag this corner there we go that quickly I've made the number eight and hold down option to click and drag this over here hold down option and shift drag the corner click on this circle hold down option click and drag then hold shift as well so holding option and shift while I drag. I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of nudge that a little bit. Let's see, I want this point right here, I'm going to hit A on my keyboard, I want that point right there to kind of line up with the three so I can go this way with a new path. So with A, A is a direct selection that allows us to edit our points and paths. So I want to hit A and then select only the path right here. Make sure you're clicking right on that path and then hit delete and it'll get rid of that portion of the path. So hit P on your keyboard, click on that last point that you just used, kind of at an angle, come over here, click, and then hold shift while you click this last point, and that'll keep a straight line. And then hit escape, which is in the top left-hand corner of your keyboard, and that'll make the extra little path go away, and that'll finish our path. All right, so just in the interest of time, I'm gonna leave that alone, just like that. There's my three and my eight. Let me hold down shift while I select all of these elements here and then click and drag on the path. Oops, that didn't work. Let me get my selection tool and try that again. Hold down shift while you select all these and then click and drag. There we go. Drag all that, hold down shift and then bring that over to the center somewhat. Double click on this, make it white and that's looking pretty good. So you can continue if you want to with all these little elements here, the battery indicator, the uh, Wi-Fi signals, and the um, carrier signals here, and then all these, uh, like the sun, that would be a, a good challenge to do. And the very last thing we want to do is align everything. Let me get these panels back over here. All right, so I want to align everything on that center. Um, also, this three is a little bit high, so I'm going to click on that and then just get my direct selection tool click on this point, hold down shift and click on that point. Maybe I just need to nudge down those two points. That looks better. Alright, so now that that three is fixed, we're just going to align everything. And I need to group this 38 degrees together. So I'm going to click on the selection tool, click on that path, hold down shift, click on this, this, right on those path, not in the middle of those shapes, but on the path. And then keep holding down shift and select that one. And then hit command G to group those together and now that's one group that can be centered so with our selection tool we want to click and drag selection box around everything and then we want to go to our pathfinder panel window pathfinder and inside there inside that same panel is the align tab and in our alignment I want to align everything on the horizontal align center so anywhere from the horizontal left to right it's going to shift everything over to a center line. That's what we want to do. And you can see that it kind of barely nudged it all over. And now it's completely centered. So there we go. There's our finished 
iPhone vector. Very good. Keep practicing. Have fun.